What's up, guys? Welcome to the Clever Magic community. And yes, I've got a surprise for you. That's right. I've got a brand new deck tech. And actually, if you guys saw my last opening video uh, that I did last week uh, with the Meriden Besieged packs, uh, this deck is actually built all around one of the cards that I pulled from those packs. So now you're probably wondering, Josh, what, what would that be? Well, here it is. It is going to be, oh my goodness, there we go. All right, so the commander for this deck, so I titled it Glissa and Her Wonderful Toys. So the commander for the deck is Glissa the Trader. We'll just click on this so you can see it bigger. Uh, so she is for Black Green Green, a legendary creature, a zombie elf with first strike and death touch. But that's not the best part. The best part is whenever a creature an opponent controls is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may return target artifacts card from your graveyard to your hand. So this is really going to be playing a lot off of graveyard recursion and really being able to utilize and reutilize a lot of your artifacts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the artifacts for last because that's really kind of the meat and potatoes of the deck. So first and foremost, uh, the lands, we're running 34 lands in this deck. So I've got Buried Ruin, uh, which is very helpful. Uh, where you can pay to sacrifice Buried Ruin, return to our artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, Command Tower, because we're running both green and black, we want to have that, that mana fixing. Uh, Detection Tower, great land to be able to take out uh, any sort of hex proof that your opponents may have. And so at that point, it's just a an insurance policy. Uh, Evolving Wilds to quickly find those those basic lands um, we'll skip over the forest and swamps golgari guild gate golgari rot farm uh, for that mana fixing uh, same thing with thriving more uh, one of the jumpstart lands um, again when you play thriving more it's going to come in tapped you're going to name green so it'll tap for either black or green uh, ruins of orin reef uh allows you to tap for colorless, but it also allows you to put a 1-1 counter on target colorless creature uh, that entered the battlefield this turn, where we are running so many different artifact creatures. That's just going to be a very powerful tool for you to be able to pump them up. Uh, for Axios Core, again, kind of the same thing, tap for colorless or pay one, tap, sack an artifact, you gain one life. Um, and especially where with Glissa, we're able to recur a lot of those artifacts. You're going to be able to get a lot of life gain off of that. So uh, for your instance, we've got Beast Within. Uh, great uh, target removal. Again, when Gliss is out on the battlefield, um, we want to be able to really utilize to the max that ability to bring back those those artifacts. Uh, Doomblade, again, single single target removal. Uh, Fog, very good instant uh, to protect you and protect Glissa. Uh, Lash of Thorns, target creature gets plus one, plus two, or plus two, plus one, and gains death touch still in the turn. Yes, Glissa has, uh, has death touch, but there's other bigger creatures in the deck that will definitely benefit from gaining death touch and and you'll quickly figure that out a noxious revival solid card to be able to bring cards back um from the graveyard on top of the library uh, price of fame uh cost two less to cast if you're targeting a legendary creature destroy target creature and then you can surveil two uh, this is really great for taking out uh your opponent's commander uh, in addition to that, it allows you to surveil too. So the biggest thing is being able to get artifacts into the graveyard and then be able to bring those in, into your hand using Glissa. Uh, finally, Strength of the Tajuru. Uh, choose target creature. 
Then choose another target creature for each time the spell was kicked. So this one is going to definitely be a late game kind of thing. You want to be able to put as many 1-1 counters as you can on as many creatures as you can. So this is one of those instances you want to save for later in the game when you've got a bunch of the mana. Uh, sorceries, we've got all to dust. Each player sacrifices all colored permanents. Uh, this is going to be very helpful um, if you do not have Glissa on the battlefield, but you do have a lot of your artifact creatures. Your artifact creatures will be protected. Your opponents, not so much. Hmm. Ancient Stirrings, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a colorless card from among them, put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library. So it's a great looting card. Assassinate very much like Doom Blade um, or Beast Within, single target removal. This is really helpful because it says destroy ta target tapped creature. Uh, cultivate, um, again, ramp. Well, you want to get at least the two forests out as quickly as possible. The hope and goal is that you can actually get Glissa out by turn three. Uh, feed the Swarm, great for creature or enchantment removal. Uh, again, when a creature an opponent dies or is put in the graveyard, that then triggers Glissa's ability. So very, very good. Kodama's Reach, great for ramp. Reclaim the Waste, um, again, ramp, ramp, ramp. We want to get as much of that basic land out as possible uh, just because you want to be able to get through the meat of the deck. Uh, Soul Savage, return up to two target creature cards from the graveyard to your hand. Uh, I like the flexibility of this because it allows you to really go through and pick and choose what you want um, based on the scenario. Uh, if you're hurting on land, you know, get, get a Burnished Heart. Um, or, uh, I mean, there, there's so many different different things you can do with it. Uh, Thrive put a 1-1 one, one counter on each of X target creatures. So this can even be a good political tool as well uh, within a game of Commander, uh, but obviously you want to make sure that you put the as many counters as you can on your creatures. And then Zoff Consumption, just a good, solid way to cause each opponent to lose life and you gain a life. Or if you're hurting on the Swamp, with it being a modal double face card, you can flip it and be able to use that as the land. Uh, on to the creatures. So we've got Tormod the Desecrator. Whenever one or more cards leaves your graveyard, create a 2-2 black zombie uh, create a tapped 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token. We're going to be pulling cards out of our graveyard like nobody's business. And so this is going to be a great way to just get zombie after zombie after zombie after zombie. Uh, Solemn Simulacrum, again, great card for ramp and card draw. Uh, Shimmer Mirror, we are playing a bunch of artifacts. So being able to play those at flash speed, yeah. Shimmer Mirror is a solid card in this, in this deck. Pestilent Soul Eater, you guys know me. I had to put Infect in, and you're going to, it's, it was a big mechanic in that, that particular set. It's also my favorite mechanic, so, hmm, I don't care. But Pestilent Soul, Soul Eater, you pay uh, five uh, for a three, three artifact creature insect, uh, you could pay either a black or a two life to give it infect until end of turn. Now, with a lot of these artifact creatures, because of Glissa's ability, you'll be able to bring them back um, from the graveyard to your hand. A mirror Retriever, when Mirror Retriever dies, return another target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Meteor Golem, solid uh, target removal. You can kind of get a pretty cool combo as far as bring Meteor Golem back, play Meteor Golem, destroy somebody else's uh, creature artifact enchantment. Obviously, we want creatures to go to the graveyard, triggering Glissa, bring an artifact back to your hand. If you got Shimmer Mirror on the battlefield, flash it out. So you're going to be doing all sorts of gnarly things. Uh, Memnite, solid zero drop uh, creature. 
uh, with just a 1-1. One, one. Uh, Magus of the Abyss. Um, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, destroy target non-artifact creature that player contr controls of their choice. Hmm. That's going to be fun because we're running a lot of artifact creatures. So this will have a lot of flexibility, and there's a way that we can actually make this a an artifact creature, um, which I'll I'll show here here shortly. Uh, Jory was familiar. Uh, this just allows you to get um, historic spells for cheaper. Uh, historic being artifacts, legendaries, and sagas. So just being able to cheat a lot of those out. Um, if you've got jurors familiar out and say someone blew up your soul ring, you can get it back and play it for free. Icar Claw Mirror, solid artifact creature. Uh, one, one uh, with infect. Whenever it becomes blocked, it gets a plus two, plus two till end of turn. A uh, glaze fiend, because we're playing so many artifacts, this is going to, this will cause problems for the for your opponents because whenever another artifact enters the battlefield under your control, Glaze Fiend gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Right now it's a zero one with flying, but as you start putting out artifacts like crazy, Glaze Fiend's going to get big real quick, real fast. Uh, Ginger Brute, uh, one, one with haste. You pay one, make it unblockable, um, except by creatures with haste. Uh, you can also tap, pay to tap, sack, ginger brute, and you gain three life. Uh, Fangren Marauder. This is a fun one to put in because whenever an artifact is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may gain five life. I know, Riley. I know. Um, we're going to be putting a lot of a lot of artifacts into the graveyard. We're going to be able to gain a lot of life. Crystalline Giant, a very underappreciated card in my book. Uh, at the beginning of your of combat on your turn, you choose a, ch a kind of counter at random that Crystalline Giant doesn't have. From among them, Flying, First Strike, Death Touch, Hexproof, Lifelink, Menace, Reach, Trample, and Vigilance, and a plus one, plus one. Put a counter on that of that kind on Crystalline Giant. This can become a very big problem for your opponents. Uh, Chief of the Foundry, solid creature. Other artifact creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Burnish Tart, solid card. Pay three, sacrifice. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Put them on the battlefield. Taps with Gliss's ability. You're going to be able to re reuse this ability over and over again. A Bloodline Pretender, this is a new card from Kaldheim, it is a changeling, so when it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. We want artifact creature. Whenever another creature of the chosen type enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 counter on Bloodline Pretender. And then, of course, Blightsteel Colossus, because why not put the biggest, baddest, infect creature I could come up with, and oh, hey, it's an artifact creature. So, uh, 412, so this is definitely going to be a late game thing. Uh, Blightstill Colossus is a an 11 11 with trample, infect, and indestructible. If Blightstill Colossus would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, reveal Blightstill Colossus, shuffle it into its owner's library instead. While we're not able to really utilize the the graveyard recursion aspect of this, it does allow you to shuffle your library and be able to mix it up and really be able to loot better throughout the game. Uh, finally, jumping over to the artifacts, I'm running 30 artifacts in this deck. Uh, first, we got Arcane Signet, solid mana fixer. Uh, Ashnod's Trans, Trans, Transmogrant. Uh, you can tap, sacrifice it, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target non-artifact creature. That creature then becomes an artifact creature permanently. So with this one, what you want to do is be able to play this, turn 1, turn 2. As soon as you get Glissa out, sacrifice that, put the 1-1 one, one counter on Glissa, make her an artifact creature. I mean, that that is just... 
solid um solid gameplay especially with um, magus of the abyss where it says to sacrifice target non-artifact creature if we can utilize and abuse this ability that ashnod's transmogrant has then you can make glissa an artifact creature you can make magus of the abyss uh fangren marauder um all the, those creatures that we have. I know, Riley. I know. He's just upset because I'm obviously playing Infect. Um, but being able to make them artifact creatures does provide that protection from that sacrifice that Magus requires. A uh, Blink Moth Urn, this is huge for this deck because at the beginning of each player's co pre combat main phase, if Blink Moth Urn is untapped, that player adds colorless for each artifact they control. Right now, there's 30. Yeah, 30. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, 40, 41. 42, 43, 44, 45. So you have the possibility of 45 mana each turn for Blink Moth Urn. That's massive. Uh, Chromatic Orrery, you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color. This is just a solid card. Once you have this out, you don't honestly have to worry about making sure um, you're getting the right color combination. You can just tap your land and have some fun. Uh, Clock of Omens, this is a solid card for this deck. Tap two untapped artifacts you control. Untap target artifact. Uh, this is really good, especially if you want to shut down Blink Moth Urn for everybody else. And only you get to use it. There you go. Uh, Cloud Key. As Cloud Key comes into play, uh, choose artifact, creature, enchantment, instant, or sorcery. Spells you play of the chosen type cost one less. So again, cheating out. We want to cheat out artifacts. We want to get a discount as much as we can. So Cloud Key is going to be able to do that. Uh, Contagion Clasp. Um, when it enters the battlefield, put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Pay for, proliferate. Uh, again, if you don't know what proliferation is, you choose any number of permanents and or players with counters on them and give them another counter of each kind already there. Obviously, we're playing Infect, so we can speed up the Poison Counter collection. Uh, we can put additional charge counters on particular artifacts um, or plus one, plus one counters. Or if you put a minus one, minus one counter on an indestructible creature your opponents have, you can give them another one. So Contagion Clasp is a really good one um, and relatively affordable, too. Uh, Cranial Plating, this is a solid equipment and definitely one you want to put specifically on glissa uh cranial plating equip creature gets plus one plus zero for each artifact you control pay black black attach cranial plating to target creature you control uh, that allows you to do that a little faster um, where the equip cost is at sorcery speed that black black allows you to do that at instant speed so very useful for that. Um, but where we're running, again, 45 different artifacts, that makes Glissa a one-shot kill. And where she's got first strike and death touch, yep, stuff is gonna stuff's gonna be hurting. I mean, yeah, you could put it on Blightsteel Colossus. I didn't tell you to not to. Uh, Dark Steel Forge. Artifacts you control of indestructible, just an, an additional insurance policy. Uh, Dreamstone Hedron, uh, pay or tap, add three colorless, pay three, sacrifice, draw three cards. Uh, if one of your cr opponent's creatures dies, you can put this back into your hand. A uh, couple more of our, our mana rocks Golgari lo uh, Locket, Golgari Signet, um, just again for that mana fixing. Um, Golgari Logged does allow you to pay for sacrifice it, draw two cards. A grafted Exoskeleton, uh, equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has infect. 
uh, when this becomes unattached from permanent, you sacrifice that permanent. So if you want to put this on Memnite uh, or you want to put it on um, Claw Mirror, definitely make sure you're putting it on, I mean, put it on Gla Glaze Fiend, um, but you want to make sure you're putting it on an enchantment creature um, just because when you if you go to unequip, then you're able to get that back. Uh, Icar Wellspring, just great for card draw. So um, I'm going to skip over Jester's Mask. I'll come back to that here shortly. Um, same thing with Mind Slaver, because that, that's the main win condition. So I want to be able to go through that. Um, Lightning Greaves. Uh, just a solid commander staple. Equip creature has haste and shroud. Put that on Glossa to protect her. Lux Cannon. Uh, this is where Contagion class comes in handy. Um, pay for. Uh, you can tap it to put a charge counter on Lux Cannon. Um, the second ability, you tap it, remove three charge counters, destroy target permanent. Uh, for this, yes, you could blow up their commander. You could blow up artifacts, enchantments. We want to be destroying their creatures because, again, with Glissa on the battlefield, we want her to have the ability to bring those artifacts back to hand. So target the creatures first. Uh, mirror works whenever another non-token artifact enters the battlefield. Under your control, you may pay to, if you do, create a token that's a copy of that artifact. So you have the chance of like with Blink Moth Urn, if you were to make a copy of that, just sit and think about the disgusting amount of mana you have to play with. And then if you have Chromatic Orrery, hmm. yeah, I thought it too. Um, Mistress Bobble, tap, sack, uh, look at the top card of target player's library, draw a card at the beginning of your next turn's upkeep, um, this is even good on yourself to be able to um, not quite scry because you can't put it on the bottom, but it does allow you to look ahead to see what you're going to get. Uh, Niven Rolls Disc, uh, great board wipe. And again, the fact that it's an artifact, yes, you are going to be killing Glissa in the process, but... This does allow you to recur that. So you can set set the table at, at the pace that you want. Uh, nuisance Engine. This one I just thought was fun. Pay two, tap, put a zero one one colorless pest artifact creature token onto the battlefield. Um, just honestly, great chump blockers. Uh, scrap Heap. Uh, whenever an artifact or enchantment is put into your graveyard from play, you gain a life. Where we're going to have artifacts going in and out. Again, just extra life gain. And the silver skin armor, corp creature gets plus one, plus one, and is an artifact in addition to its other types. Again, that insurance policy with Magus of the Abyss. Obviously, Soul Ring, we gotta have Soul Ring. Uh, the Immortal Sun, uh, solid, solid artifact. Players can't activate Planeswalker's loyalty abilities, so this will shut down any Planeswalker decks. <coughs> At the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card. Uh, spells you cast cost one less, so again, we're able to cheat stuff out, and creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Uh, this, this card's very special for me. Um, I had sponsored a box. It was the Rivals of Ixalan box that Trevor had opened up. And this is actually one of the cards that was pulled from that box. So, of course, I had to put it in this deck because why not? Uh, Tormod's Crypt. Yeah. Especially for your opponents who have a lot of graveyard recursion. This allows you to exile their graveyard and do it over and over and over again. <laughs> uh, Traveler's Amulet. Uh, just a one one mana artifact, but you can pay one, sacrifice it. Search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it in your hand, shuffle your library. Unwinding Clock. This is a huge card for this deck because you untap all artifacts you control during each other player's untap step. 
that's a lot of a lot of utility, a lot of extra blockers. You can attack, they'll untap. It'll be good. And then Whisper Silk Cloak, equipped creature, can't be blocked and has Shroud. So if you really want to be gnarly, put it on Blightsteel. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to make sure with with this and with Lightning Greaves, if you're going to put any other equipment on the creature, you want to ensure that you put that equipment on first and then put the the shroud equipment on because once that's on there, you can't put anything else on because it can't be the target of spells or abilities. And where equipping is an, an activated ability of the equipment. So just be aware of that. Okay, so going to go back to Jester's Mask and Mind Slaver. So this is the biggest win condition of the game. The infect is actually an alternate win condition. It is not the main one. So first, Jester's Mask. This is a very, very old card. Surprisingly, I actually have two of them. Uh, so you pay five, comes in tapped, but with the Unwinding Clock, you'll be able to untap. So you pay one, tap, Sacrifice Jester's Mask to look through target opponent's hand and library. Give that player a new hand of as many cards as he or she had before reshuffle the remaining cards afterwards. So the reason why I I put this in, and it's almost Sun Triplet's mean. And I'm okay with it. So the what you do is you want to play this on the end step before your turn. So you play, you activate this ability, pay the one, tap, sacrifice Jester's Mask, target your opponent, okay? Give them the hand that, that you want. Now, the reason why I say that, because... You want to have Mind Slaver on the battlefield. So Mind Slaver, pay six to cast it. You pay four, tap, and sacrifice Mind Slaver. You control target player's turn, or you control target player during that player's next turn. So what you're doing is in a very sick and twisted way. You play Jester's Mask. You give them the hand that you want going into Mind Slaver, and then you use their hand, their deck, against your opponents. And then if it's down to 1v1, you can give them the crappiest hand on the planet where they can't do anything, and then you swing in for the win. Whether that be with Blightsteel or Glaze Fiend or whatever the case may be, or if you need to get particular artifacts out and they have um, a bunch of creatures and say they have Ashnod's Altar, Just sacrifice all their stuff. You get everything back. And I mean, this is up there as far as salt level with my God of Salt deck. But it's so much fun. Um, Looking through the the deck list, the one thing I do, one thing I do need to change, and actually I will just do this right now. I'm actually going to drop the forest. So right now I'm running 13 forest. We're actually going to drop that to 12. And then I'm going to add the reliquary, reliquary, reliquary tower. I don't know why that was so hard uh, to the deck. Uh, just because if we're getting so many cards in hand, uh, we want to make sure that we have an, um, no maximum hand size. So that's the deck. Um, super fun. Uh, very gnarly. Definitely not a nice one. <laughs> but um, fun nonetheless. And to be, to be honest, it was a very different approach of a deck that I would normally do. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the deck because I had a lot of fun putting it together. Um, I... I know at some point I want to be able to do games of commander, um, whether it's live or whatever the case may be, but to be able to 
play games of commander with you guys. So if that's something you want to do, let me know in the comments below. Um, I will include the deck list uh, or link to my tapped out. Uh, so you can check that out as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this deck tech. Um, if you did give it a big old thumbs up, uh, make sure to leave a comment. Cause as I said, in previous videos, uh, Trevor may select this to be a video that is used for the giveaway. So you definitely want to make sure not to miss out on that. And then as always, make sure to subscribe. If you haven't click that bell notification, so you don't miss any of our new videos and do something nice for someone, pay it forward. And as always, we'll catch you on the next one.